Meanwhile, tomorrow, Donald Trump's going to be attending an appeals court hearing on his claim of presidential immunity for the January 6th election interference case. Let's bring you right now the co-anchor of ABC News This Week and chief Washington correspondent for ABC News, Jonathan Carl. He's the author of the book, Tired of Winning, Donald Trump and the End of the Grand Old Party. And he's here with ABC's new reporting on what the special counsel has learned about Trump's inaction during the January 6th insurrection. Also with his former litigator and MSNBC legal analyst, Lisa Rubin. Reverend Al Sharpton also with us as well. John, uh, Jonathan Carl, let's start with you. Talk about the new reporting on Donald Trump's inaction, because mm -hmm. that's what we kept hearing on January the 6th about you know, Trump not only was watching as people were running in trying to get him stopped, but Liz Cheney would talk about how he would rewind his mm -hmm. DVR to watch the most violent moments of the insurrection, to watch the most violent moments when cops were getting their heads bashed in. Talk about this new reporting, though. Joe, these are really the defining hours of the Trump presidency, what Trump was doing in the White House while the attack was underway. We've heard from Liz Cheney. We've heard from others. But now what the special counsel has done is they've methodically gone through and spoken to everybody who was with Trump during that time. People that refused to talk to the January 6th committee, like Dan Scavino, perhaps Trump's closest aide in the White House, a guy that's been working for him since he was his caddy as a 15-year-old and ran the Twitter account. Uh, Dan Scavino, also the, the White House counsel's office, uh, lawyers who some, in some cases did speak to the January 6th committee but refused to speak about what they said to Trump and what Trump said to them, citing executive privilege. But Jack Smith went to court. He fought that, got the right to question them. Dan Scavino, most significant here. Uh, Joe, what we learn is Dan Scavino quite vividly describing, he was with Trump almost throughout the entire time, uh, describing how he went in uh, to that dining room off the Oval Office uh, to try to plead with Trump to do something to call off the rioters. Obviously, we know others went in. Uh, Mark Meadows went in. Ivanka Trump went in. Pat Cipollone went in. What, what Dan Scavino describes is Trump st sitting there, arms folded, intently staring at the television, being what he says was non-responsive to these pleas to do something. Um, angry, he describes him as angry, and this is a very critical thing. He told the special counsel, according to our sources, uh, that the people that were attacking the Capitol were, quote, angry on his behalf. This is why Trump didn't want to uh, call in the National Guard. This is why uh, Trump didn't want to tell people to go home, because he believed that they were carrying out his wishes. They were, again, in Scavino's words. This is not Liz Cheney talking. This is Dan Scavino, his most trusted uh, advisor inside the White House, saying that the people attacking the Capitol were angry on Trump's behalf, that that's what Trump was saying to his advisors when they were begging for him to do something to stop the riot. And, and Lisa Rubin, we know everybody in Trump's inner circle begging. Dan Scavino adds, obviously, yet another layer to it, because, again, the guy had been so close to Trump. He'd been his caddy since he was a teenager. It was around him constantly. He ran his Twitter account. We heard about Ivanka once again. We hear, hear, hear it again about her running in, trying to stop him from doing it. Previously, we'd gotten texts uh, from Don Jr. talking, you know, trying to get his father to stop this, Sean Hannity. You go down the list, Laura Ingram, I believe, also. I mean, everybody in Trump's uh, in, in, inner orbit, outer orbit, all around, uh, his lawyers, all the staff in the White House, everybody begging him to stop this. And yet he refused. He refused, despite the fact we also learned from testimony to Jack Smith that Trump knew he lost. That's right. And to my mind, Joe, the most important part of yesterday's reporting isn't just about Trump's inaction. It's about what he did when Scavino left the room. My recollection is that Scavino, after trying for 20 minutes to get Trump to de-escalate what was happening at the Capitol through Twitter, eventually gave up. He left the Oval Office. And at that point, that's when Trump, of his own volition and alone, tweeted the critical Mike Pence did not have the courage tweet. 
That, at that point, folks from the White House Counsel's Office came running in search of Dan Scavino, essentially asking him, how did you let this get posted? Why did you post this? And Scavino said, I didn't do it. The one thing I want to point out to you and our viewers is that Jack Smith not only likely has Dan Scavino's testimony on that, but he has the data to back that up. How do we know that? Because on December 11th, the special counsel's office entered a filing about three expert witnesses whose testimony they intend to offer at trial. One of them is a person who has gone through the data from two cell phones, one belonging to former President Trump, the other belonging to an individual one who also had access to the Twitter account and must be Dan Scavino. That person is prepared to testify to when Trump had access to his Twitter account, when it was open, and which devices sent which messages. They must know already, Joe, that that tweet as Dan Scavino has shared with investigators, was written by former President Trump and written by him when he was alone in that Oval Office dining room. That's damning. And Jonathan Carl, certainly that tweet helped people believe put Vice President Pence in that much more danger. And one of Trump's other aides, Nick Luna, came to Trump, per your reporting, uh, and, and suggested that Trump was in trouble. And the president sort of suggested, well, who cares? So tell us what, what that means. Tell us the, how illuminating and important that piece of evidence might be. Well, 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 first of all, before I get to that, on the point about the cell phones, uh, there were only two people, and, and this is also part of what uh, Scavino has told investigators, according, according to our sources, there were only two people authorized to, to tweet out of Trump's account, and that was Donald Trump and it was Dan Scavino. And we know from, the, from what Scavino has told investigators that the tweet about the vice president not having the courage was from the president. The president did that alone. In terms of that, there were two tweets that are often pointed to by people who try to defend Trump's actions on this day. Uh, one where he said, uh, stay peaceful, you know, the Capitol, don't, don't harm the Capitol Police. Stay peaceful to a crowd that was not peaceful. That was from Dan Scavino. That was not from Donald Trump. That was actually from Dan Scavino. He got Trump after some uh, effort to agree to send that tweet out, but it was it was from Dan Scavino's phone. It was not from Trump's. In terms of the vice president, it was it was uh, it was Luna um, who uh, Nick Luna who uh, went in to tell Trump that uh, that Mike Pence had had to be evacuated from the Senate chamber and taken to a secure location, a location that we now know was beneath the Capitol building, and Trump's response when his aide, his personal aide, is telling him that the vice president had to be evacuated because of the violence could be a threat to his life. Trump's response was two words, according to Luna and according to what Luna uh, uh, told the investigators. So what? He hears that his vice president has been evacuated due to violence from his supporters. And Donald Trump's response is so what? Now, to me, as I as, as we learned this, um, it, it echoed what Trump himself told me uh, just a couple of months after January 6th, uh, when, when I interviewed him for my book. He told me, uh, you know, when I asked him, were you concerned for Trump, for, for Pence? He said, no, I wasn't concerned. I said, because it was, you heard the chants. They were saying, hang Mike Pence. And Trump said to me, well, they were angry. They were angry. How can you pass on a fraudulent vote? I mean, he was in almost real time justifying to me in an on-the-record interview the chance of his supporters who were calling for the execution of, of, of Mike Pence. Again, it comes back uh, to what Scavino said, which is Trump recounting how Trump was saying the people in the Capitol were angry on his behalf. That's why he didn't want to call them off. They were angry on his behalf.